Whether it's buildings, tunnels, subways, or office towers, structures require continuity of critical life safety circuits to ensure a reliable supply of electrical power for emergency equipment. Fire alarms, emergency lighting systems, backup generators, and other critical equipment require electrical systems that must continue to operate during a fire. The continued operation of these systems is critical to the safety of the building's occupants, building evacuation, and firefighting activities. In order to ensure the performance of these safety circuits, national and local codes typically require a two-hour fire resistance rating. To achieve this rating, cables are tested and certified by a testing agency in accordance with a testing standard such as UL 2196. However, engineers often ask, are there significant differences between the UL 2196 listed systems and is the current UL 2196 testing adequate? The answer is yes, there are differences between systems, and no, UL-2196 currently does not test for the presence of toxic and or flammable gas created during testing, and they do not test for tensile strength post-fire exposure. An ISO 9001 certified and a nationally recognized third-party laboratory conducted testing above and beyond the current UL-2196 standard test protocol. The testing showed that some UL-2196 approved cables produced toxic smoke and gases under fire conditions that can ignite and explode, with forces similar to natural gas. These findings have important implications for specifying engineers, fire marshals, and for codes and standards committees. Underwriters Laboratories UL, defines safety standards for both the production and use of products. Its standards and certifications allow the public and first responders to trust the safety of listed products, as well as those products' ability to maintain safe environments. UL 2196 evaluates the performance of life safety circuit wiring systems during fire events. The current UL 2196 test subjects these systems to fire conditions for two hours and then to a pressurized water hose stream. To achieve UL 2196 certification, cables must maintain electrical integrity throughout the fire test and then continue to supply power without fault after the hose stream test. Generally speaking, there are two types of UL-2196 listed cables, based primarily on the type of insulation used. Mineral insulated cables, commonly known as MI, use an inert and inorganic material such as magnesium oxide as their insulation material. Polymeric cables, on the other hand, use an organic polymer-based material such as silicon rubber as insulation. Both types of cables can and do meet existing UL-2196 fire exposure standards. However, it has been observed that these two cable types exhibit different behaviors during the fire test that could have significant implications for the safety of building occupants and emergency responders and minimize damage to buildings. An ISO 9001 certified and a nationally recognized third-party laboratory conducted additional testing beyond the current UL-2196 standard test protocol. Using cables purchased from authorized electrical product distributors, the labs conducted a series of experiments to characterize and quantify smoke and gas generation, composition, concentration, combustibility and flammability of gases generated, mechanical strength, electrical integrity. This video will discuss the testing conducted and some of the key findings. It is important to note that current UL-2196 listed systems can be found on UL's Product IQ website. The ISO 9001 Certified Lab conducted material composition analysis of each of the five cable systems to understand their behavior and identify the types of substances off-gassed from each system when heated to 900 degrees Celsius or 1652 degrees Fahrenheit. This analysis approximated the conditions a system might experience in a building fire and was conducted to determine what substances each system emits into the environment during such a fire. All of the cable systems evaluated, except NVENT Pyrotenac System 1850, have silicon rubber-based insulation. After identification of non-metallic materials used in system components, the thermal stability of each non-metallic material was TGA-tested up to 900 degrees Celsius. TGA testing involves heating a small sample at a controlled rate 
while monitoring the weight loss of the sample. TGA results showed a significant reduction in weight for all samples except for Pyrotenex FHIT 1850's inorganic mineral powder, while the System 1850 cable sample lost a fraction of a percentage of weight. The remaining non-metallic material samples from other cable systems lost at least 10% and up to 76% by weight. Weight loss at higher temperatures may indicate degradation of organic and polymeric materials. This weight loss occurs when gases are released from the silicon rubber insulation material when exposed to heat. These gases were then examined by Pyrolysis GCMS to isolate and identify the substances emitted upon heating. Pyrolysis is an analytical tool that involves flash heating a very small sample to 900 degrees Celsius in helium in an instrument that can capture and analyze the resulting gases. GCMS experiments identify different substances that are present in the gases and give an estimate of the quantity of each gas emitted. The volatile substances detected in the emitted off-gases through pyrolysis are undesirable for different reasons. For example, hydrocarbons and siloxanes of various types may be toxic, explosive, and or flammable. The ISO 9001 testing facility also analyzed the combustion properties of the substances off-gassed from the five cable systems when heated to elevated temperatures. This testing assessed the potential for these cable systems to provide additional fuel to an existing fire and to evaluate the potential for flash fire and explosion hazards. Using a combustion chamber, sections of each cable system were heated to evaluate the combustion properties of the off-gassed substances. The combustion properties of the cable systems were compared to the combustion properties of natural gas and propane. Pyrotenex's System 1850 was the only system that did not produce substantial amounts of combustible off-gas products with properties similar to natural gas and propane when exposed to elevated temperatures. These off-gas substances could contribute additional fuel if an existing fire is present and may pose an explosion hazard if delayed ignition of the gases occurs. These gases travel down the cable armor and conduit to other areas, potentially posing threats to the emergency systems, building, occupants, and first responders. To better understand the significant flammability and combustibility laboratory findings, an additional series of experiments was conducted at a nationally recognized third-party laboratory with a full-size fire test wall that replicates UL2196's testing setup, protocols, and procedures. Again, using samples obtained from authorized distributors and powering each product per their manufacturer's installation instructions, these products were tested per the UL2196 procedures and their gas production and flammability were evaluated. Testing followed UL2196 time and temperature curves and procedures. The test consists of mounting the cables and supports as specified by each manufacturer, then powering the circuits at 600 volts. The furnace then produces temperatures per the ASTM E119 fire temperature curve for two hours. Within five minutes after the two-hour fire exposure is completed, power is disconnected and the wall is sprayed with a fire hose per UL requirements. Once hose testing is complete, power is reapplied to the electrical circuits. The test is considered passed when the test circuits re-engage lights at the end of the circuit. This verifies that electrical continuity has been maintained. The results were consistent with those observed in the combustion chamber laboratory testing. Most passed the UL2196 continuity test. Also consistent with the observations made during combustion chamber testing, smoke and gases were produced by all samples within 5 to 10 minutes after the start of the test, except for Pyrotenex's System 1850 MI cable. The gases emitted by the cable systems with silicon rubber insulation were flammable and potentially explosive. To reiterate, testing was done at two separate well-known labs, and the results were very consistent. UL2196 currently does not test for the presence of smoke and gases. At the ISO 9001 certified lab, compression testing was performed on cable samples before and after exposing the cable samples to fire and fire suppression conditions. The compressive strength properties of the five cable systems were evaluated. This testing compares the relative effects of fire on the cables and the cable's ability to prevent conductors from shorting or breaking under a compressive load. Of all the cable pre-fire samples tested, System 1850 and System 25C with 1.5-inch conduit withstood the equipment's maximum achievable force of 50,000 pound-foot. 
System 1850 cable sample retained 96% of its pre-fire exposure strength. Mechanical strength of fire-rated wiring systems during a fire event is extremely important for maintaining the supply of electrical power to critical life safety equipment. For over 100 years, fire safety codes and standards such as UL 2196 have been instrumental in saving lives and property by recommending best methods and practices for designing buildings. Driven by learnings from scientific inquiry and from incidents of high-rise fires and failures of critical life safety circuits, agencies have continuously improved their fire safety standards. We are confident that the industry will appreciate the knowledge gained from this series of experiments. Standards evolve as new knowledge is gained, and we are hopeful UL will review their current 2196 standard to consider additional requirements regarding allowable levels of smoke and toxic and combustible gases. Doing so could help reduce property damage and, more importantly, improve the safety of building occupants and emergency responders in the event of a fire. With the availability of new knowledge on the shortcomings of listed silicon rubber insulation-based cables under fire conditions and the availability of other listed systems that do not produce toxic and combustible gases under fire conditions, fire safety professionals have more facts to confidently specify the safest systems. For life safety circuits, you have to be wired differently. Never compromise when it comes to safety. Thanks for watching. To learn more and for contact information, please visit go.nvent.com forward slash no smoke.